At MGM, I was typecast. But you see, Hollywood has done a tremendous disservice to the country of my birth, to Mexico. I'm an American citizen now. That doesn't mean I want to hate Mexico. I love Mexico, my God, you know. And I love the United States. It's been wonderful to me. But anyway, it's a different kind of love, you know. It's like you love your mother and you love the best friend you ever had. You leave your mother to be with the best friend you've ever had. You know? Anyway, it, it, um, Mexico was always represented in Hollywood in a very, very bad light. Uh, the Mexican was always a bandit. See, I never, I never heard of uh, or saw Venezuelan bandits or Puerto Rican bandits or, you know, Guatemalan bandits. Mexican bandit with a bandolier. See, senor, you know, I don't got to show you no stinking badge, you know. And either that or, this, or the, the gigolo, you know, the so-called ladies' man, you know. And the senorita, that was an easy prey. She's hot senorita. Uh, or the indolent peon leaning against the cactus, taking a siesta on the sombrero, mañana, mañana, lazy, lazy. I mean, the, Mexico is a wonderful country with a great, great culture, great culture. You see that on the screen now. When I was at MGM, if they wanted to make me romantic, I did a picture with Jim Powell, Two Weeks with Love, I was Cuban. I did a picture, several pictures with Esther Williams. I did one called Neptune's Daughter. I was um, Argentinian. The last picture at MGM that I did was with Lana Turner called Latin Lovers. And I was Brazilian. You see, Cuban, Argentinian, Brazilian, Sounds good, to but Mexican. See, Mexican doesn't sound right. Right in the image of, of an indolent peon, of an immigrant that is uh, illiterate. And, I mean, the disservice that they have done. So therefore, they never wrote so good role to Mexicans. Never did. Now it's beginning to change a little bit, but it's a long way to go yet. I used to talk to producers and directors at MGM. And I, I would say, you know, why do you do this? What a wonderful position you have to show the little kid growing in East Los Angeles, crawling in front of the television, a decent Mexican. Doesn't have to be a great hero. I mean, but portray a bandit if you want, but not at the exclusion of the, of the honorable man, and indeed the very educated man. Let's have a balance. Why do you have to all that? Well, yeah, they said, we do it maybe it's out of ignorance. We don't know too much about Mexico. And what we want to have is, is colorful characters, colorful. And a Mexican bandit is colorful. And the senorita, colorful. And even the indolent peon is colorful. And the, the gigolo is colorful. Colorful. We're looking for color. An architect is not colorful. A bank clerk is not colorful. So that's what we do it. I said, well, you're doing a tremendous disservice. I, I could never never made you know, an inch of uh, impression on them. They couldn't do it. So what's going to happen, I think, is that the blacks have shown us how to do it. The blacks finally said, OK, we develop our own writers, our own directors. We develop good actors. And, we, and indeed, they have opened the doors to the black people. They have opened the doors of opportunity. Wonderful. That's what they, especially Mexican. You see, Puerto Ricans are quite accepted now, thank God, you know. Uh, the Cubans are accepted, and uh, Spaniards like Antonio Banderas, very much accepted. Mexican still doesn't quite sound right yet. So we have to develop our own producers, writers, directors, uh, good actors, and do it the way the blacks did it. That's the solution.